I'm Stephanie Trenzo. I lead an amazingly creative team of puzzle solvers at Oracle who love sticky problems and who genuinely enjoy helping our clients through their transformations. I'm joined today by two fantastic guests to chat about how Oracle Cloud helped clients achieve real business goals and specifically talking about the story with Rotary International. So as 2020 has taught us, life can be fairly unpredictable. Please take note of our standard safe harbor agreement. I'm really delighted to bring this discussion to life with first a fantastic story of how Rotary discovered Oracle and then ground that with some practical exploration around how automation and process can be key to your migration and your disaster recovery, and then put it all in context of the broader cloud evolution. And please don't forget to stick around at the end where we will have some live Q&A. So I think most people know that Rotary International is a large humanitarian organization that focuses on fighting disease and doing good in the communities where there's a club. Some people on the call may have even won a Rotary Award at your high school, but you might really be surprised at the global scope and breadth of impact of this organization. I know that I was. Today, the organization has more than 35,000 clubs worldwide and 1.2 million members. I want to welcome Fez Hanif, the CIO of Rotary International, who I've had the pleasure of meeting and discussing Rotary's amazing mission and future technology strategy. So welcome, Fez. Hello. Nice to see you again, Stephanie. Yeah, you too. So maybe you could give us a little bit of background on Rotary International and help us just understand how you see the mission uh, around the world. Sure. Um, so Rotary, as you said, it's a global organization. I would say about 20% of our members are based out of North America and 80% are outside of North America. So we have huge presence in Asia, very growing presence in Asia, Africa, Middle East nations. And, and one of our challenges has always been that Rotary started with our from a technology perspective, very US centric. So our data centers are U US based, our technologies are very US based. And, and to reach out to our members around the world and give them the technology experience that they deserve, and frankly, the world is going towards, introduce a new set of challenges for us. Um, go Think about from a polio eradication programs. Think about from any disaster programs where they need instant access to funding for grants. Um, they, the donations that we capture, the club meetings that we have, which is now happening on a technological scale, we could not handle the scope of the required words coming from the Rotarians around the world and to have a system based out of Evanston, Illinois. And, and it became a bottleneck for us. So as Rotary has started to grow from a global perspective, the need has become for Rotary to think from a technology side, global, not look at from a local side, but global. And that's where um, Oracle has come in to help us with that. Well, and the world really has changed, as you said. And so your technology practices to keep up with the mission of Rotary's you know, cause around fighting diseases really has to incorporate a new technology strategy. What were some of the big picture business goals that you're trying to achieve in moving Rotary to the cloud? Yeah, so, so one of the biggest things we had was our performance, our application performance. It's all started, right? Every big plan starts with a very small need, right? And one of the need was we wanted to go mobile because as I said, most of our partners are Rotarians around the world. They, they don't have access to a desktop that they can sit and actually do the administrative work. So the need to became is as we are introducing more and more technical solutions, we need to have a mobile, a mobile product so they can do the work while they're in the field with other Rotarians as well as doing some welfare programs. Well, for, for you to have a mobile device and have a mobile product, you need to have systems that can respond within the seconds to the demand. Otherwise, nobody's gonna use your mobile product. Um, and it started with that simple thing is how do we scale to the level we want to scale? and get Rotarians to use the products we are developing to help them do what they need to do too. And that started with the conversation of, do we have the infrastructure and capacity in place to do it? 
Now, there were other components that came in. Our, because Rotary is so global, we needed a financial management system that can scale globally. Mm -hmm. Oracle Cloud ERP had that solution and it resides in Oracle Cloud. That triggered some ideas, that created some thoughts. And that's when um, um, the whole concept of modernizing, simplifying, and making our architecture scalable came in with what Oracle has offerings and then it came together. Well, and you know, as you mentioned mobile, it, it's not only, I think, uh, the global implications, but you're also looking at trying to drive towards a demographic shift too, right? So uh, can you speak to maybe some of the importance of bringing, let's say the PeopleSoft grant application to the cloud or the things that are changing as a result of the way that you're shifting your membership? Yeah, absolutely. Look, so our, our upcoming president uh, for Rotary, which is going to be next year, one thing he told me when I first met him was, I do not spend any time on my desktop anymore. I, it's all mobile. And if I cannot do it in mobile, I won't use the systems. Yeah. Um, so the, the world is changing, right? I mean, the, the demand for how you use technology, how you consume technology, and how digital is presented to an individual is changing dramatically. It's no more going to be these laptops that we spend thousands of dollars on. It's, it's old technology. Nobody wants to sit down in front of a laptop and do the work. Everybody wants an iPad or, or a, a mobile app to quickly do the things. Um, UX and UX design became such a significant piece in all of this. Um, so when we thought about how we're going to do that, Oracle Cloud ERP coming in, PeopleSoft, we still had PeopleSoft sitting in our data center in an instant. And the challenge became is how do I handle um, the two major offices we have in India, how do I make this processing work for them in a timely manner at the same time scale? Um, we have offices in Seoul, we have offices in Tokyo, we have offices in uh, Sydney, um, as well as uh, South America. How are we going to provide that customer experience at the same time, handle the, the whole host of um, financial laws that are changing now with, with, with um, money laundering initiatives and all of that? How do we provide that reporting in scale? And, and it was, the solution was very simple. So solution right in front of us was Oracle Cloud. Let's move PeopleSoft to Oracle Cloud, get the horsepower that we need, get the resiliency that Oracle Cloud gives us, and us to focus more on to solving the needs of our, of our customers or our members, as opposed to handling the infrastructure issues, handling yeah. this went wrong, that went wrong. That That's wonderful. So you know, enabling you to shift some of the criteria of the technology pieces to Oracle Cloud frees you up to focus on the business needs. And, and you mentioned a couple of the criteria that you already were thinking about, like performance, like scale, you know, distributed abilities. Um, what are some of the other things that were critical or important aspects of making a decision about the cloud provider that you chose and, and how Oracle Cloud came into play? Yeah, absolutely. So, so there were a couple of factors we also looked at. We also looked at the 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 brand, right? I mean, you wanna you wanna go with because our we at Rotary we are not a software organization, so yeah. we want to focus on the products that can be resilient, scalable, and secure because there is a lot of sensitive data uh, for Rotarians. So, just a little bit of context setting: the people who are Rotarians are who's who of the society generally. And their data is very, very critical and needs to be protected. We get about 250,000 attacks that we know of on a monthly level uh, to hack into our data systems to steal uh, data. So to us, that is very critical that um, wherever we go from a hosting strategy, we need to go with an organization that knows what it's doing. And, and, and I, I firmly believe, and I'm not saying this just because I'm talking to Oracle, um, but I firmly believe that if you want to trust somebody with data, somebody to, to handle your information in a secure way, Oracle is the way to go. And, and that was something that gave us a lot of comfort that this is the direction we want to go. There were other factors as well. Um, we are much more of a Microsoft shop. We have Azure that we're thinking about from our product setup. And Oracle has a great partnership from a data sharing perspective with Azure. And that becomes our threshold that Oracle and Azure can become that two layer of cloud, or cloud hosting services that we can utilize. And PeopleSoft kindly fits right into the Oracle cloud in infrastructure. It has all this equipment that it needs. 
It has security that we covered. And it also, as we're moving to Oracle Cloud ERP in the future, kind of is a grooming stone for us to get there. So for us, Oracle Cloud fit like a glove and, and actually the way we implemented it, it was so seamless that we were proven right a uh, thousand times over. Well, I, I really love hearing that that safety and the trust and the protection and security of the data was a deciding factor for you, as well as the partnership with Microsoft, because ultimately it is a multi-cloud world. So th those are all fantastic. What about on the human side? So there's technology decisions, but then of course you need people and you need experts to help implement them. And you started started speaking a little bit to how that implementation worked. I know you've also worked with Oracle Consulting to help bring some of this to life. Um, anything you could share about that experience? Yeah, absolutely. So, so when we started with that initiation of let's move it to Oracle Cloud, we opened up a bid and we got bids from various uh, consulting organizations. And then we got a bit from uh, Oracle Consulting as well. Now, one thing I would say is Oracle Consulting is not the cheapest in the marketplace, right? You can better get a better deal outside. But when you talk about professionalism and when you talk about, again, I'll go back to that theme that I was referring to previously is the trust. Is that when you talk about moving your financial management system to somebody, you got to make sure that you are in with the right partners, that they will get you through. Um, you know, you can, get, you can get these codes where if everything goes well, you can save a couple of cents here and there. But the thing is, nobody who has ever run a project can tell you everything went according to the plan. Absolutely. Something will always drip. But the point with Oracle Consulting was, we trusted Oracle to do the job. We were going into Oracle Cloud. Who else can we trust more than Oracle Consulting to get us there? And when the project did kick off and we went through and we did run into, you know, walls, uh, turned out to be uh, walls of paper, thank God, but we did run into walls. Um, Oracle Consulting was with us through and through. Um, they, they were complete professionals. They guided us through that. They gave us options of which way they wanna go. They were very upfront. And it made this whole experience so seamless that we are looking at all the other things that we wanna partner with Oracle Cloud, uh, Oracle Consulting. Um, because I think that the, the organization that Oracle is building, which was previously not the case with Oracle, yeah. that they are building a full service organization now. Um, it's not just about products with Oracle. It's not just about hosting with Oracle. It's like how to get there. So it's that three-legged stool that if you get a good partnership with Oracle going, you get the end-to-end -end result. And that's what we are very excited to partner with Oracle on this. Yeah, it's that whole experience, as you said. So, you know, we talked about some of your decision-making and, and how that experience has gone. Maybe now let's shift to outcomes. Could you share a little bit around what were your results and, and how is this making it easier for you to be able to focus on the business impacts that you need to make? Absolutely. So, so recently, I can tell you, um, before we moved to Oracle Cloud, um, we were spending 30% of our time resolving issues. Uh, I would get, I would hear about tickets that people were not were not able to access our systems, or something was down, or the performance was too slow, or all of that. I'm, since we moved, I have had zero tickets about that. I have never heard of any issue that came up that I cannot log in, or something is too slow. There are other issues, but those are custom code that we have written in, in, in PeopleSoft that we always have to tweak and enhance. And there are some regulatory changes that come in that we need to work on. But as far as working on the mundane operational tasks, that is significantly reduced. And our small team of six developers are focused on enhancing the user experience. So in the last six months, we have reduced our backlog by 30%. And for last two years, our backlog what only got reduced by 15% because we were so engrossed in, in resolving operational issues. So to us, this is a tip of the iceberg. I mean, to us that if we understand our cloud a little bit better and we manage the cloud a little bit better and in partnership with Oracle, we could be in a situation where our team is focused on the user experience, building new products, building enhancements to our code that really delivers the value add proposition and delivers what Rotary should be doing in the first place, helping people to move, do good in the world, rather than focusing on how do I fix this issue so Peter can log in, right? That, that is completely off the table. And from an ROI perspective, that's a huge impact. 
we, and, we and that is that you are describing, I think, precisely the utopia for everyone Absolutely. that you are able to shift your energy from technical debts and operational issues to forward innovation and, and the, driving the mission of your organization forward. Stephanie, I'll give you an example. Well, you know, we are moving to Oracle Cloud ERP in the future. So our team is focused on that migration. And we would not be where we are today if it wasn't for Oracle Cloud, because now I, the team can focus on that. We are not even thinking about PeopleSoft because PeopleSoft just works. It's done. Yeah. And yet, so, so that is a huge, huge saving for an organization. That is, that's really a great example. So you're being, you're able to pick up a project and move forward on something that you would have been distracted and not able to get to. Absolutely. So one of the best parts of being on a webinar with our clients like yourself is helping other customers on their journey. And given that you work with an organization that is accustomed to lending a helping hand, uh, maybe you could think of some examples or lessons learned that could help others out as they're walking on the same journey that you've been on. What were some of the lessons learned or advice that you might have for, for other clients? Sure. No, look, uh, um, my lesson learned is cloud generic, right? It's not about Oracle Cloud or it's, it's just about cloud. Just to live it, give you a little bit of context, unfortunately at Oracle, we have multi-tier cloud system that we manage. We manage Oracle Cloud, we are in Azure, we are in AWS, we are in Pantheon. So we have a lot of cloud and, and, and our architecture is kind of not very good. So we are trying to clean that up, but this is where we are today. One of the lessons learned as we moved to the cloud was governance. I, I think it is imperative that any organization that thinks about going into cloud in a much larger scale or in any short scale as well, you need to have a governance policy. Because if you come in from your own data center to your cloud, you never think about the data. You never think about the data moves. You never think about the resource utilization because cloud kind of opens up the whole world to you. And it's very easy if your code is not written the right way, you can have a rogue script that could go and start consuming resources that can, that can kill your application and you can get a serious bill at the end of the month. Um, so you really need to have a really good governance policy of understanding what your applications you're putting into cloud. How are you gonna manage that application? What are your thresholds that can trigger alarms? that you work with your cloud provider to let you know when you hit certain thresholds to send you an alert so you know what's happening. You Either you kill the process or something. Um, we learned a hard way um, and not with Oracle Cloud but with other cloud systems that we put in an application that drowned a buffer pool. Uh, our pools were completely underwater. We couldn't do anything about it. And um, we had to kill the application after the application died by itself. Um, so it is important that you have a really good governance policy. That's number one. Number two is you got to define good partnership with your cloud provider. You need to in understand and get to know the people that you'll be working in on a day-to-day -day basis. Because look, any time you can think of, of implementing something, a plan can be made to an extreme level of detail, but nothing goes according to the plan when you actually do something. And it is imperative that you have really good partnership with your cloud providers. So you can reach out, you can have in some escalation path and you can have that discussion where they're willing to help you. Not to just have a very transactional relationship, but have a human kind of relationship. I'm proud to say that with Oracle, I have a really good relationship with uh, Oracle providers. I can pick up a phone, call Stephanie, call Ariana, call others. And I, I know that they, I will get the response. Um, now, they might say, you, you idiot, you messed it up yourself, do this, and I'm like, fine, got it. But at least I have that partnership where can I have a direct conversation with. So picking a partner is very, very important. The right partner with the right team that you partner with. Um, again, those two, in my mind, are the top two things that you should always think about when you think about your cloud strategy. That's great. And, and you know, you mentioned governance. We talked about the, the right partners and the right experts and laying out the strategy and the big picture views. And these are all things that we cover in our cloud evolution framework, which is something I shared with you the first time we met. Mm -hmm. I really want to thank you for telling us your story. Um, I think it's been an amazing journey so far, and I'm really excited about what we are going to continue to, to do together and keep changing the way that Rotary International is able to focus on their business objectives. 
No, and I appreciate the partnership that Oracle provides. And uh, and, and if I can leave something with, uh, with the people who are listening to this conversation, I would say is um, picking the right partner is very important. And from our perspective, at least I can say that partnering with Oracle has been a win-win situation for us. Um, and, and I highly encourage anybody who's thinking about going to the cloud, give them a try. They are really, it will really help you. And I'm not getting paid to say that. <laughs> no, we're here to make sure that this transformation goes well for you. As you said, not just in the good times, but even when things come up on the journey that are unpredictable, that we're there to make sure we get to the outcome. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Now I would like to introduce one of my other favorite people here at Oracle, Chris Fox, who leads our applications to OCI engineering team. Chris is going to speak to us about the many benefits of moving Oracle apps to OCI and is going to especially focus on PeopleSoft. So now we'll take a look at why Oracle Cloud Infrastructure is really a great platform for PeopleSoft, both for production, disaster recovery, and especially what happens even after you've got on the platform. So the Oracle Cloud in particular was built for these three steps that you see right here. Number one on the left is all about modernizing the Oracle estate and also the non-Oracle estate. And we do that through a number of things such as automation and a number of other capabilities. But this gives you 40 to 50% cost out. And this is mission critical applications. Now with that, probably the most also, second most exciting thing is now you start to build out and innovate on the cloud platform. It could be SaaS applications, it could be advanced analytics, it could be other types of capabilities we'll talk about. But the key is you have to be able to do it simultaneously, side by side, because the key for us is to modernize at scale. We wanna help you self-fund and accelerate, but at the same time, we realize that most people, it will take a number of years along their journey to digital. The Oracle Cloud helps you do all three things. So what is this leap forward strategy for digital business uh, and how does it help people solve customers? Well, LEAP is really an acronym. And if you see the letters here, LEAP is all about L for leveraging your existing investment, but really lowering the total cost, many times 50% or above. E is about extensions. So these extensions, we'll talk more about what, are, what these are, but it's all about innovating on the platform once you got there. These are the things you couldn't do on premise. So it could be new cloud native services, even SaaS. A is for about automation. Uh, a lot of the cost out comes because the Oracle Cloud's delivering unmatched full stack automation. And we'll talk about what that means in more detail but no one's doing anything like this at our full scale for these enterprise applications in particular. And lastly, P is all about performance and protection. So the cloud is something where we wanna be able to go faster, do more with less, but also make sure we're doing it in a safe and secure manner. All of these are capable with the Gen 2 cloud. Uh, we love the strategy. A lot of our customers are liking this strategy, but of course, Gartner itself also is finally really seeing that the Oracle Cloud is helping customers modernize and accelerate their journey to digital. If you look here on the upper left, we had the most improved score in 2020, which is fantastic because really we've been optimizing for the enterprise. And if you see here, anyone who's looking to modernize their existing IT environment in particular, really should be evaluating the Oracle Cloud. And again, because they're seeing what our automation is doing and really in most in particular, is helping customers succeed. So why is it so special or different than what everyone else is doing? Well, really we looked at it and if you see here, it's all about the people soft that you know, we're not changing it. It's about the people soft that you own and especially most customers have customized. We're not forcing a change there. And number three, something that you've integrated into your environment. Many times PeopleSoft is the beating heart of an organization. We completely believe or understand how to move those applications, no matter how intertwined they may be. So what do you get though, as my team and I, what we do is we architect and deliver these solutions. When you get there, if you look at the upper left, this dramatically lower TCO, 
definitely enterprise class SLAs. Um, you would never go to the cloud with something like a PeopleSoft financial system or your core HR system or payroll if it was not enterprise scale and ready. Uh, we automate the full life cycle and also we deliver these capabilities. And you see here, not only is it better than what you're doing usually on-prem, because again, the unmatched automation, but number two, because we've built our cloud specifically for this, many times we're much better than other clouds. Uh, we think AWS, Azure, and Google all have great clouds. The difference is we've built our cloud specifically for modernizing applications like PeopleSoft. Now, this allows us to deliver far better performance and scale, like you see here, 10 to 100, depending on maybe what uh, set of features that you've chosen to deliver with, but we'd certainly migrate in weeks and we certainly can deploy in hours. So it's very fast, very rapid, and there are just hundreds of customers leveraging this capability today. Some basic information that uh, is always good to go over into deeper depth, of course, but ultimately when we say it's 63% less than other clouds, there's a number of items that we've evaluated here. It's usually the cost of infrastructure, the cost of actually the administration, uh, the license fees, et cetera. But ultimately, if you look at it side by side here, uh, this is something we've seen many, many times over. And it's because of course, again, we've built our cloud to accomplish this problem and really help customers accelerate this journey. Same thing for on-premises. I think when we look at on-premises, there's normal things that we look at for the cloud, like automation. But I think in general, what we've seen is anywhere from 49 um, to 43%, depending on the horizon of your total cost of ownership. And again, this is something we would help each customer with, but these are really the average numbers across hundreds of customers. So it probably isn't much different. Now, the exciting part, uh, I think most customers uh, are seeing again with the cloud over and over again is this ability to extend most importantly. So I won't go through all the detail around the wheel, but once PeopleSoft here is on top of the cloud and running on the cloud, anything from data and analytics to digitizing manual processes to uh, potentially, uh, we expect most customers eventually would go to SaaS over time. The question is, when would be the right time? Which would be the right module? And ultimately a number of other items. The cool part about this is that it's up to you. You can run as long as you like on the Oracle Cloud, either with PeopleSoft or with SaaS or ultimately hybrid. And in the meantime, you could build new cloud native apps. You could do high performance computing. This is actually becoming very big in data and analytics and uh, a number of other features. But all of these now become available to you on the Oracle Cloud immediately. Now, when we think about cloud native services, we've been talking a lot about PeopleSoft. Of course, PeopleSoft runs great. So does in Zoom. So the key with Zoom is that they are running on our cloud. It's an example of a cloud native application. And so what you see is that Oracle not only runs PeopleSoft really well on the Oracle cloud and all those extensions, but when we look at cloud native services, none are bigger than Zoom. So in this case, it's scaling to millions. As a matter of fact, if you see down here, we push 93 years of HD video through the Oracle cloud every day for Zoom. So it's built for both modernizing your past and building your future side by side. When you look at PeopleSoft itself, uh, one of the things is, you know, what is this automation that Oracle's talking about? And when we look at something that we provide to you, it's called PeopleSoft Cloud Manager. So if you look here, full stack automation and migration, uh, this is an example where we're looking at a database and another platform and a set of uh, really a package for PeopleSoft itself. This right here looks and feels just like PeopleSoft. It's built and maintained by Paco and the whole team over at the PeopleSoft development side. And it's built only for the Oracle Cloud. So you get this for free. It really simplifies both migration to the cloud and most of all of the normal operations and administration once you're on the cloud. It's a very, very uh, unique to Oracle. It's a lot of automation, full stack and it simplifies operation and also further drives down cost. So the question also becomes, um, you know, what is core to your enterprise? How much would you like to, us to do versus how much would you like to do? 
So we have three different deployment methodologies. One, you could put it up right on Oracle Cloud infrastructure, right? That's an IaaS tier. And ultimately you control the app, you run the database, and essentially it's very simple, a lift and shift itself for both the app and the database. You could though decide, and most customers might do this, is really start to automate some portion, of course, of this environment with not only the infrastructure, but also the database. And with the database and cloud manager, what we saw is that we could automate the full stack, apps tier, database tier, you name it. And in this case, again, you still maintain full control, but now you're allowing the cloud to have further automation and allow you to do simplified things like patching, et cetera, scale up, scale down. The third option here, and this is becoming a little bit more common, is that Oracle or partner helps manage this environment on your behalf. So in this case, you could have Oracle Cloud, you could have Oracle Cloud with database services, and either Oracle or a partner helps manage this environment for you. In this case, again, you still have uh, a lot of control. And the question becomes for you, how much of PeopleSoft would you like to run on the Oracle Cloud? It's really a choice for you. So with that, why don't we pass it back to Stephanie? Thanks, Chris. I am always amazed hearing you talk about the LEAP framework and how you help clients position their migrations in a strategic context. Now, I'd like to expand on that even further in a full cloud evolution. As we know, examining existing workloads and applications is one element of a very complex set of criteria and decisions that companies have to make as they look at their technology transformations. So now I wanna share with you our cloud evolution framework. We heard Fez mention some of these different criteria as he talked about his Rotary International journey. Our cloud evolution framework was designed to provide a tool and a way to facilitate all of those many decisions that you need to consider as you look at your overall technology transformation. Our first category is around think. And this category is about bringing in insights from the industry and what's happening outside of your company, the guidance that you might need inside of your company to ensure that you have consensus amongst your stakeholders, and then building a strategy that isn't just a blueprint or a roadmap, but also a set of success criteria. As we heard Fez say, things change along the way. So you want some criteria to ensure that you are continuing on the right path. The next category is prepare. We chose the word prepare very intentionally again, because our hope is that as you plan out your migrations and you move to set up a foundation for your technology strategy, you're doing it really to get ready for what comes next so that you can focus on that next set of business objectives. You're covering off the things that you need that are very foundational like security and like audit controls. But let's not forget change management, which is also a really important part of preparing for that journey. The third category is maybe one of the more fun ones to me, which is create. So now you're starting to really get to explore what does it look like to leverage the benefits of net new application creation, native application development, integration, if you're in a multi-cloud scenario, especially. The next category is learn. Learn is not only about skills, which is a critical part of your overall cloud evolution. Who are the people that you already have in your organization? What are the partnerships that you have and the new ones that you're going to develop? But it's also about learning from an analytics perspective. You begin to unlock all new sets of data. How are you gonna learn from that data? How are you gonna leverage it for more insights to your business? And then governance, that very critical one that we heard Fez speaking about. How are you going to learn around your new cloud estate? And then finally, we have our iterate category. And iterate is really important because it is about that the journey doesn't have a destination. You're going to continue to evolve. Our iterate category covers off things like continued optimization. Uh, how are you going to look at your process, co-sourcing with the right partners? So this cloud evolution framework is something that we've built compiling 
ideas and thoughts from hundreds and hundreds of different client examples across industries to facilitate discussions around the decisions you need to make. And don't worry, you don't need to make all of those decisions yourself. We can guide you through this and we can zoom in or out on the tiles that are the areas you most need to focus on in your strategy through one of our Hello workshops. Let me share a little bit more about our Hello workshops, which are two to four hour virtual sessions where we will take you through a facilitated process of looking at your overall cloud evolution together. Our workshops are very flexible and modular, designed to meet your specific context. But in every case, we're going to look at where you're looking to go with your business objectives, understanding your existing strategy and your goals. And we're going to marry that up with some ideas and hypothesis about what could be possible in addition to an art of the possible session where we're really ideating together and brainstorming what your innovation and ultimate story could look like. At the end of one of these hello sessions, we will play back to you the discussion that we've had. We'll give you a deliverable that shows what a potential path could look like and evaluate you against that overall cloud evolution framework. I mentioned Art of the Possible, and I know we're all getting a little bit fatigued with video meetings. So we try to keep it lively. Why not do something fun with your team for a few hours? We do promise to make it entertaining, thought provoking. We're using different kinds of interactive tools to make it a fun process and feel like that workshopping that you remember doing on a whiteboard in person. You can sign up for a session and read more about Cloud Evolution Framework on the OCI blog post. But please don't go anywhere, it is your turn. We thank you all for attending. A special thanks to Fez for sharing his experience. And we're now gonna open this up for your questions.